All right, uh, so we're gonna be taking a look at Apple. And um, first let's start off with the weekly. All right, so this is the weekly. What do you see in the weekly? That, the low here, 129.04. The weekly low, this is no you know, uh, hourly low, this is a weekly low, right? So this is really important low and um, we'll see how it's handled. Is it gonna break down? Is it gonna spring? Or is it not even going to touch it and just uh, go back to 140, which is very likely to occur? So that's the breakdown on the daily chart. So understand that the this break right here is quite significant, meaning you have over 160,000 shares, which is pretty big volume. I mean, it's I think it's I don't know, it's pretty big volume here, and uh, it broke this level. And it had some follow through as well. So from the weekly, you see lower high, lower lows, and all of that. All right. So the uh, you know the the low that was made it was one twenty nine dot six four, but the weekly low is one twenty nine zero four. That's sixty cents away, and it rejected quite significantly. And we'll go over that. And the other level is one forty or one forty or one or just one forty. All right. Let's put this away and move to the daily. So for the daily, you can very clearly see the 140, is a 140 or level right there. And uh, and I, I I mean, over here, the breakdown is about on 8 million, sh 80 million shares. And uh, I mean, I, we want to uh, view this. This is very important to take a look at this bar, the intraday behavior in terms of waves. This will give you a clue of whether it's going up or down. So that's what I'm going to do now. All right, so this is Apple, again, 140, or is the support break, and the weekly low is 129.04. So now we'll take a look at the intraday. So on the intraday, we'll start with the 15 minute. Right, and I'll show what this thing did. First, let's get rid of, I'll leave the pop up. All right, so we're swinging down, right? This is what I explained was the springboard and it worked quite nicely in that you had this springboard test, test, whatever, this uh, final spring of this area. As soon as it goes into spring positions, you should want to really get ready for it because typically this, I think two or three key scenarios. Either it's going to rally from the spring or it's going to what? It's going to have a test of the spring and then rally or it's going to spring the spring. These are the three situations that typically happen. Once you have a spring, either it's going to rally, either it's going to test this spring and then go with a, with a test inside the spring. Or the third thing is makes one more spring and then goes. So this this I explained uh, was quite telling because it wasn't rocket science. It's just as it's moving down, you have the climax, right? Right here, the biggest wave in 49 waves. What happens after that? The bottom shakeout that goes up. What happened? Rally down, rally up. That sets up the V bottom with the breakout bar right there. And on the biggest uh, biggest wave in nine waves. So I knew it's going to go. It's going to go up. Right. So then pull back and it held and then held and went into spring position. And you know what happens. After that, the rally confirmed the spring. Again, the rally. There's no ordinary rally. This is spring breakout rally. Right. So spring breakout green bar rally. And that set up that nice big, uh, not big move, but. On an intraday basis, it is a pretty big move. So that's what happened. So this level, there's someone buying at this level. And um, it went up here. I don't know what this was. I don't know what that was. It was some other level somewhere else. So I think it had to do with this volume area. This POC, there's some level of POC or whatever over here because there's a lot of volume buildup over here. All right. Now, after that, it puked. As you know, the market puked. Why? You have the selling wave, the selling wave, 
now the the interesting part is you see this low here i don't know what it is 129 something it got taken by this right but but don't think it's bearish because it rejected it all right and the the behavior before it as soon as it came down into this prior springboard this smaller scale springboard what do you what happened you had the biggest volume in 28 waves again the biggest volume in 28 waves followed by some type of i think it's a spring because they took the prior low like you know that that prior springboard low they took it and rejected off of it and now it's moving sideways so what that is telling me is that this is a potential um cob that right there is a stop run or spring this is a stop run or spring but i would same thing it will shake out rejection and now it's consolidating you see the consolidation and look at the volume five two two one six pull back on three this position is setting up the barrel the barrel which is what happens typically on a springboard what you have is after that change of behavior you can either have like a low, lack of supply and it goes but a lot of times it sets up with the extended um, some type of base even after that sign of strength or whatever like over here you see one, two, three, four bar rally, but look at the consolidation. How many bar? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirty, forty, fifty. It's like twenty bars. Similarly, after this change of behavior, you take the low, wipe out everybody down here, bounce back on good volume. Look at the volume. Right? That's good volume. It went down on six, went up on thirteen. And look at the pullback volumes, nothing, twos and ones. So then it goes up on six, pull back on three, holds. By the way, this was a little spring right here. You see that? It's a little spring, a little spring of the prior low. It's very small, and, but, but this could be your lack of supply right here. And now it's in that position where we'll see how it how it's handled, but I think it's gonna go up and take this area. You know, typically what happens is when they're uh, base forming, you have that one change of behavior that trends up, then trend it back down, then another change of behavior that trends it up, and it goes. So I think that's what's going on. And this is common, like you have bullish action on the left side and the right side, and that's basically your point figure on the left with a little, you know, a little up move and then come back to set up the rest of the base of the point figure, right? Okay, so the other thing is that here, the level here is 140, and you know, as I explained the prior chart, that was the breakdown, right? And the breakdown on the dailies from the 140 level. So now, now what you want to do is see if you have enough cause, because you want to see how much cause is there to push the move right to see how far it can go so i'm gonna take a look at this oh shit. anyway uh, i'm always doing <laughs> uh, anyway so just look at the 131 level that line of accumulation has nine points what is nine points plus 131 It's 140. So you have nine points across the 131 level, and that projects to the 140 breakdown area on the daily on Apple. So we'll see how all of this is handled. I have to check a couple of other things. Um, because there is overhead resistance right here. You see this supply right here? Where, where it was, it was, it's not a small amount of supply. And there's this uh, minor distribution here. 
If you see it, I'll show you the minor distribution. Is right there. You see this? That's your minor distribution, which forced the market back down. But this is that there's something going on here as well. On this barrel on the right hand side with a test, 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 and another test. One, two, three, four, and five. So they're ready to take these guys. We'll see if what happens, but um, you can really see it's building. All right. So 131, you have a nine point cause, which can project 140, but they have to get through this minor distribution here at this uh, 135 area and um, get above the week prior week low. And then we'll, we'll see if they get up above 136, then, you know, 140 can easily be, not easily, but it should project to that area. And that's the daily support break. So that would be the, the break and test on a daily chart, right? So that's the idea. So what are the next steps? Next steps is see what happens on the open on Monday and uh, how this thing holds and whether it breaks down or not. If it breaks down, all bets are off because the 129 weekly level is in play. If it holds and it and it it makes that higher high above this level right here, I forgot what this is, 133.40, then, then the it's bullish because it has to take out this high. All right, it has to take out this high. It has enough base and you, you want it to take out this high. If it uh, takes out the high, then we're gonna be taking a look at this low, uh, this prior high over here to see if it pulled back. One of these two highs will pull back to offering the trade up to the high in this area and then 140. All right, folks, that's all, thanks, bye.